coronavirus and not I think we have some footage that we shot down there. Take a look. This is probably down about 70 to 80 percent for the year. Um, so with that being said, we kind of lost all of our staff. Um, we're only really able to operate to go only. The way that Pennsylvania takes care of the shutdown of resorts or restaurants is you basically have 24, 48 hours to figure it out. Is that what it's been like? Get some spots, open, closed, indoor, outdoor, yes. And this feels like they're not really taking into account the small business arms of things. It's not just the owners of small businesses whose futures are uncertain. It's the employees as well. I know a lot of people that are trying to do that. Over the next couple of years, we'll be able to start growing again. I, I just want to make sure that we keep kind of our. Well, they made that a big deal to put that on. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That all might back up again. Billy, you got something very good. You said a couple of years. How long did you go on like this? How long did you think about that? If we went to August, we'd get trouble. Somehow we got through that. It's difficult for everybody, so I try to stay as high as possible. You know, Sandra, John, anyone that's ever a small business. So much more than that fails. And Billy and Holly, who you just heard from right there, point out it's the community that has helped them out. It is the community that stepped up. Our best to them, President Biden is now speaking at the White House. Let's listen. From all across the federal, state, and local agencies that secured yesterday's inaugural activities. And a special thanks to the members of the National Guard from around the country. In an unprecedented situation, hopefully, nothing never have to be renewed again. And uh, <clears throat> with the most professionalism and duty and honor that can be expected. The president, as president, as commander in chief, I always uh, respect and revere their service and that of their families. But now to today's announcement. <clears throat> Vice President Harris and I were joined by members of our COVID-19 team, response team, and <clears throat> Dr. Tony Fauci, our chief COVID medical advisor, Javier Becerra, <clears throat> excuse me, our uh, nominee for Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Rick Murphy, our nominee for Surgeon General, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, uh, she's gonna be the director uh, for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and uh, Dr. Marcelo Nunez-Smith, who will be leading our equity work and the COVID response. And Jeff Zients and Natalie Quillen, who are managing this whole effort. Yesterday, yesterday during my inaugural address, I offered a salient prayer, and a silent prayer. It was both salient and silent. I thought it was important that people understand what had happened, that we all pay tribute to the, our prayers for those 400,000 Americans who have lost their lives in this pandemic. On Tuesday, uh, Jill and I, Kamala and Doug, we stood at the reflecting pool in front of the Lincoln Memorial and joined Americans all across the country to remember those 400,000 moms and dads, husbands and wives, children, sons, daughters. And I said at that moment that to heal, we must remember. To heal, we must remember. It's important to do that as a nation. When we must also act, though, not just remember. Yet for the past uh, year, we couldn't rely on the federal government to act with the urgency and focus and coordination we needed. And we have seen the tragic cost of that failure. Three to 4,000 deaths per day. To date, more than 24 million Americans, 24 million Americans have been infected. To put that in context, America makes Bella, up leave her alone. population of 25% of the world's confirmed COVID-19 cases and over 20% of all the COVID-19 deaths and we have 4% of the world's population. The pandemic <laughs> COVID, the pandemic <laughs> Disproportionately, the fact that on blacks, Latinos, and Native 